It is the most famous dance to come out of Argentina, tango, a partner dance that emphasizes vibrant and playful movement and lots of improvisation. But tango is also becoming known as a powerful tool for patients with Parkinson's disease. This story is about a Parkinson's brain on tango. I just saw her and she just did something to me. Something just went clunk, clunk. <laughs> The disco was Christie's in Cincinnati, Ohio. And the woman who made something go kakunk inside Lee Reeves was Jerry. I kept begging her to marry me, marry me, marry me, marry me. And she kept saying, no, no, no. The yes came 34 years ago. And we danced our way through our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> That was before Lee, a mechanical engineer, had a stroke. It was before Jerry, a registered nurse, noticed a change in her body. <clears throat> I didn't really feel anything going on except just a twitching in my pinky, sort of like a, like a tick you might get in the face. That twitching pinky led to a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. It was kind of devastating at first, you know. Well, it was devastating, it was just a, something that to get your arms around. Doctors don't know what causes Parkinson's disease, a slowly progressive neurological disorder that is caused by degeneration of neurons in the brain. Dr. Stuart Factor is the director of the Movement Disorders Program at Emory Brain Health Center. The main neurons that die are dopamine neurons, and uh, all the treatments that we have, nearly all the treatments are for replacement of dopamine in the brain. Among its many jobs, Dopamine impacts brain processes that control movement. It's defined by motor symptoms, tremor, stiffness, slowness, walking and balance problems. It's been 10 years since Jerry's diagnosis. I'm doing pretty good. I think it's advancing a little bit now. Getting harder to like follow lines. She still paints, the latest, a family tree. I'm going to put names on the big leaves of the different family members. You tie a knot in there. Yeah. Thank you. I sew and I can't do as neat a job now. Uh, writing is terrible. I can barely read it. And my voice has been modulated, lot, almost not there. Walking has replaced running. Last year, Jerry broke her hip in a fall. Despite the struggles, there is one constant. All right, everyone, when you get a chance, grab a partner and start dancing. It's less nightclub and more high school gym. But make no mistake, the gym at the VA in Atlanta is Tango Central. Five, six, ready, and T-A-N-G-O. And T-A-N-G-O. Parkinson's patients are paired with volunteers, from grad students to dancers in the community. Am I messing up too much? No, we're doing great. I like it, it's fun. You know? yeah. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of cool people. Lee and Jerry have come twice a week for a few years, not just because it's fun, but because it is helping Jerry. I've noticed a difference. It organizes uh, movement better. And with the steps for tango, you have to switch your thinking. Emory Assistant Professor of Medicine and VA Research Scientist, Dr. Madeline Hackney is the tango instructor. T-A-N-G-O. She is also a former professional dancer. And I knew that I was especially interested in the way the brain controls movement. It's an unconventional approach with an unconventional lead scientist, but what the tango can do for people with Parkinson's is significant. I had this idea that dance might be something that could help people to move better and overcome various injuries because dancers think about movement so deeply. There had already been some research on the effects of tango. There was one um, that had shown that frail older adults, if they participated in Argentine tango, had improved in complex walking tasks afterwards, in comparison to a, an exercise control group. 
And so that was like a little piece of a kernel of evidence that, okay, tango, interesting. And then there was another piece of evidence that showed that while people were relying in a positron emission tomography, a PET scanner, they were doing tango-like movements to a very rhythmic beat, there was increased activation in the putamen of the basal ganglia, which is the part of the brain that is most impacted by Parkinson's disease. Dr. Hackney's first pilot study on tango for Parkinson's patients was 12 years ago. She modified the dance and the steps to make it safe yet hopefully effective. First of all, we looked at 20 hours of tango over a 12-week period versus 20 hours of a chair exercise class, which is the traditional class that was offered at the time. Improved balance and gait parameters. So it improved balance and walking. Hackney's study showed that after the class, tango dancers with Parkinson's were able to walk further, faster, and longer than before the class. Standard clinical motor exams to measure balance also showed improvements that were also retained. So does it have to be tango? Well, Hackney says that the foxtrot and the waltz are just as effective, with one difference, this. Tango patients were able to get up from a chair and walk more easily and quickly. That is no small feat in a disease marked by mobility issues. Hackney says the improvisation that tango allows is another plus for patients. Functional MRIs, which look at blood flow in the brain to detect areas of activity, are now being used to learn what brain networks and areas change after dance rehabilitation in people with Parkinson's disease. There is no definitive answer yet, but Hackney thinks the findings will confirm what she believes. Dance itself is a form of cognitive rehabilitation. When people dance, and in our, especially in the tango, they have to use their brains in a very, very particular way. They have to remember things, they have to understand timing, they have to understand how to put a movement to music. And it, in a way, it's a form of cognitive training. And I think if we can see that on, in our brain, that'd be really cool. It's not just that it works, it's that this class makes people feel good. It's not about people being patients in the room, it's just about people being people together and enjoying something together. For one couple, it continues what began in a Cincinnati disco all those years ago. Dance cannot undo the loss, but it can restore confidence and connection step by step.